Hey, it's uh, Chris with the Blockade Pinball Podcast. Uh, so, we had the announcement from uh, Well Played what Zacharia tables officially are going to be on their cabinet. I thought today we would look at the uh, first half of those tables, because there's 27 in total. So we'll uh, we'll break this up into two videos for you guys. Uh, first one's going to cover the... We're going to go in chronological order. So we'll go all the way up into their tables of 1983. And then the uh, second video that will be coming out later will cover the back half of all those. So what do you say we go ahead and uh, take a look at these? And this time I'll actually correct my volume level. I know. Things. <laughs> um, and I just need to tweak that volume level and then bring the old game up. There it is. All right, so we are going to start with 1978's Winter Sports. And we will be going all the way through all of these here up to uh, Time Machine. So let's get going. Winter Sports first. Winter Sports. So, first things you gotta know, with the well-played cabinet, um, as was verified, also, they do not have a score display in the back box. So the score that you're seeing at the top here, even though I'm playing in landscape and uh, that machine's going to be playing in cabinet or portrait mode, uh, the score will be just like this, up at the very top of the playfield. Good news is that most of the Zacharia tables, they have significant back box, or not back box, uh, back of the table uh, showing, just like this one, so the score won't actually be cutting into uh, anything in particular. Uh, these early tables also have very much they're basically solid state versions of EM machines. Wow, well, yeah, that was quick on winter sports, but that's okay. We got plenty to get through, so we're just going to rip through these and uh, give you all a taste of what they are. House of Diamonds next. House of Diamonds. So there you go. See how, uh, well, it looks almost identical to. <laughs> Winter sports, doesn't it, in terms of a table out? <laughs> Two pop bumpers, spinner in the middle, you got that disc. Oh, but this one has four flippers. Nope. Tried to nudge it there. For those of you unfamiliar with uh, Zacharia Pinball, they. Italian designer. Um, very, very colorful play fields with art that is not similar in the least to what Bally, Williams, Stern, Gottlieb were doing. The other thing you'll notice is where the slingshots are placed above the flippers. Usually on all the machines that you're noticing. Oh, I'm going to try and catch one and I'll uh, show you what I'm talking about here. On all your American pin Oh, and then I center drain. Look at that. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna restart that one just so that I can show. Actually, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter on this one. But yeah, I'll show it anyway. Um, this is gonna be pretty much on all Zacharia tables. But if I can capture, it's rather difficult to capture the ball on their tables for some reason. There we go. Okay, so you see where the ball is and the slingshot directly above the ball? Usually, that slingshot on most tables is a little bit wider so that you can do post passes and do backhands. But here, you try to do post pass, it goes right. So you got to time it just a little bit. But your backhands are not as crazy as what you could do on... A typical American style. So uh, these play different than what you would typically uh, be used to, but they've got their own unique quirk. And Magic Pixel has done a pretty dang good job of emulating true Zachariah uh, physics or Zachariah. I know some people say Zachariah, but when I looked at the uh, actual pronunciation on Google, it says it's a Zach. Now the 
Aria or Aria? Uh, that's a good question. I don't know. Anyway, let's uh, let's escape from this table. Let's go to Strike. Again, another 197. There's four tables for 1978 here. Let's see if this one looks any different. Hey, it does look different. So already you can see that they're in lanes. So far, every single one of them has been an open in lane, which means the ball can roll right back out the backside. Again, not a usual design. Zachary like tables do tend to have a lot of drop targets. So if you're a fan of drops, that's cool. And then keep in mind also that uh, we're not sure. Uh, obviously, I'm playing on Steam, not playing with Android graphics. So it'll be a question as to how intense uh, these actually will match. There we go. So, all right. A little fun with drop target action, right? And then another thing with uh, Zachary Tables is their uh, their nudge is not the most realistic thing in the world. <laughs> here, I'll show you that with uh, on Future World here. Future World. Wow, nice MIDI track going on there. So watch, watch my nudge here. It's like this spongy uh, motion. And again, look now, look, look at how severe th these slingshots are even in narrower than the uh, the previous one. So I mean, how do you post pass on that? You you really got to let the ball go down the flipper ways. So that will mess you up some if you're used to um, typical slingshot placement, especially when you're trying to cradle and catch the ball. Because it's literally, you're only getting half your flipper to do the trick instead of your full flipper. Who made that uh, multi kid cabinet on the uh, right hand side there, huh? <laughs> Gotta hit that special on the drop. So, like I said, with these flippers like this, it feels almost like you're playing with uh, the old school two inch flippers instead of the three inch. Because literally, where your throw is, you, you're just getting... I mean, you're not there, not there. That was good enough for a post-pass. But... So if you want to equate the era that these tables were in, this is when uh, Williams still was barely a player. Uh, Gottlieb was king of the market. And Bally was doing ultra wide body uh, machines, or getting ready to. Uh, when I say ultra wide body, I'm talking Future Spa and uh, Space Invaders, things like that. Paragon, Embryon, 
There were six total white bodies that they did, but that's beside the point. And I'm not sure, this kind of looks like it was a little bit of a wide body, too. Um, it's hard to tell sometimes. So. Okay, I take it back. Yeah, Bally hadn't quite gotten into that yet. Um, but so these are when the pinball machines were still very much, basically, they'd gone to solid state instead of being EM, just meaning that they had uh, an actual you know, computer board running instead of just circuits. Um, and they had the digital scoring instead of the real scoring. But their layouts and the uh, style of play was very much still influenced by the electromechanical machines. Let's see if there's something. I'm going to see if uh, we can alter the... Nope, it doesn't. Okay. I was wondering if you could alter the uh, trajectory of the ball by nudging like you can on Pinball Arcade. It doesn't look like it. So this is going to be the thing with the well-played arcade, you're going to get much more old-school pinball play. Um, than, uh, than what you're going to get on either the Toy Shock machine, which does have a couple of... I think it has two electromechanical machines on it. Um... And that'll be the same thing for the Ad Games cabinet, because they're using the same uh, Gottlieb tables made by Farsight. But these are going to be ancient compared to the uh, tables offered on the Arcade 1-Up uh, machines, both just in style of play, whether you're playing the, uh, the Williams machine with Attack from Mars, or even the... Certainly, if you're playing the... Uh, Star Wars or Marvel tables, which are definitely modeled off of the uh, EM, I mean, excuse me, the uh, DMD era of machines. Alright, I'm just going to let this drain so we can uh, cover the next one. Hot Wheels! Not Hot Wheels. to be mistaken with Mattel's Hot Wheels. <laughs> I, I do have to laugh at the way Zachariah named their tables, because they're very generic. Okay, this for sure is a wide-body machine. Figured out how to. Uh, if I could figure out how to display the cabinet in streaming, <laughs> I would. But unfortunately, it always wants to then show. Well, it's such a narrow view of what you can see. Um, well, that's see, that's an interesting placement in the. So check that out. So these are. Um, these don't have the Italian, what they call it, the Italian bottom. The uh, they don't have. There's no inlines here. But instead, it's got it. And I don't even know if those are slingshots. Do they bounce? No, they don't. So it's not a sling. It's just a uh, a pocket. Interesting. And that is something else you're going to notice with these. These are not. Uh, these are significantly different layouts than what you will see anywhere else. So that's also an interesting angle on these. Fire Mountain. B 
But you notice how this has very similar to what we were just playing. It's almost like a figure eight. How it's got that loop uh, or the orbit around the top. So it's definitely a case where Zachariah was uh, recycling <laughs> ideas. Yeah, but they would change up, change up, place them here or there, put them drop targets in a different spot. You know. Man, I was like, have I even been able to flip on this? And I will say, for those wondering what the physics are like on these machines, um, if you've played Farsight Spinball Arcade, the physics are definitely closer uh, in feel to that than what they are in anything Zen has done. Um, they're much floatier, a little more forgiving. That being said, they're still... Uh, this is Star God from 1980. They um, aiming on Zachariah tables is kind of weird. Again, how the ball comes off the, the flippers is an odd one. And I used to blame that on Magic Pixel, the developers of uh, Zachariah Pinball, and then I played a real Zach table, and it was almost the same. So, in in a lot of respects, they nailed the physics of what the real tables play like. Um, they just play odd. There's no doubt about it. But I mean, look at this play field, though. It's just wacky, right? It, it it's almost cut in half, but you have no control over the top half. Unless I'm missing a flipper. Is there a flipper up there? No. Nope. Hello. All right. Keep on going. Got to get through these. Space shuttle. Go. Space shuttle. Oh. Okay. Tell me these sounds don't sound familiar, huh? These are the exact same sounds that are used in William's Firepower. I don't know why, <laughs> how they got away with that. Are they? I didn't. I don't know. Maybe these were just generic sounds that anybody could use that were just on soundboards. But that's where these come from. So obviously, sound design got a little bit better, though, because, you know, I don't know, did they take them from <laughs> from Firepower or not? That's a good question. Don't know. I just know Firepower came out first. This Firepower was from 1980. And, but that's the other thing. Firepower. Things that has them similar. It's got two, although well, Firepower doesn't have the drop targets, it just has stand-up targets, but it's got, in the middle, Two, three banks. It's got a four pop bumper layout um, at the top. It's got <laughs> the uh, well. It's got a trap on the left hand side there, rather than a uh, a pass through. Um, but clearly, <laughs> they <laughs> Zachary was uh, pilfering some ideas from Williams's table. So this is definitely not the AM feel. So we are we are now very much in the solid state era of pinball. Let's get out of that one. 
Oh, okay, that's 19... See, I'm mixing up on my dates. That one says 1980 also, so... Uh, how did they find out about... <laughs> firepower? I don't know. Let's play Earth, Wind, Fire. Not to be associated with the band, and yet I'm sure they were playing off that name all the same. Just doesn't have the and fire. It's just Earth, Wind, Fire. Oh! Here's some more uh, Williams sounds. Again, we've got the weird placement of the the slingshots. Again, look at how look at how far in they go. Just really makes controlling the ball difficult because you've got just a that narrow half your flipper is all you have to use to to try and catch the ball with. Why do I want to say this is Gorgar? I don't think that's right, though. I don't know. It's definitely the same sounds that are used on something from another table from Williams, though. So a lot of these still sounds like firepower sounds. It's almost like they took half the firepower sounds and put them on one table, and then took the other half and put them on this table. See, if you rocked a table that much and it kept on rocking like that on any real table, that thing would be tilting out hardcore. I feel like I made my scoreboard really big for some reason. Did I? Uh oh, I'm playing with camera angles. Oh no. Shouldn't have done that. Oh hey, look at that. That's what I did. There we go. That's a better size. I hit a button. Like I didn't like that giant score at the top there. Oh, okay, so here's something that's introduced. I'm now just noticing. This one has bonus ball time. So you see it counting down. I can still flip, I can still flip, I can still flip. I'm flipping, 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 and then my flippers go dead. So that's something that was unique to Zacharia. All right, go to locomotion. 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 Oh my god, this thing has some of the ugliest plastics in the world. See, those are defender sounds. I'm telling you, man. Zachariah bought the sound package and uh, went to town with it. But god, look, yeah, look at those... Look at the hills or the, the, the tunnels up there. That plastic, it is the cheapest looking... I don't know, maybe it's metal. It just looks horrible. <laughs> this is where uh, the playfield art goes a little nuts. Um, starts being a distraction to your uh, eye rather than being a, uh, a clean flow to the eye. If you see the ball stuttering, that's because I'm getting notifications. That's not uh, indicative of what's going on with the actual game. Nice little horseshoe there. A uh, little bridge up there. Here comes my game time bonus. So it's still three ball games, but uh, you just get this added depending on uh, how well you did because you can increase the length of time that you get your uh, game time bonus on. See, you can even lose the ball and still have game time bonus.
Bing bing. All right, pinball champ. We got two more after this. this is 1982. Pinball champ 82. Look at that lighting. Very bright. Very red. So this is the first. You'll notice that uh, there is an upper playfield. This is the first time that Zachariah tried this. And it is a bear to get the ball up there. Uh, and I'm not doing very well to even come close to showing how to get it up there. Ugh. Really? We're going to... Uh, See if I can get on the shot. It's like, maybe I can squeak one out. Oh, oh it's right there. That's the shot. It's the really hard um, upturn. We're going to play this one more time just so I can try and show it. It's, it's really b brutal and precise that you need to do it. <laughs> House ball. It's not a terribly wide uh, flipper gap there, too, you'll notice. All right. So you see where I'm going to be ending, where it says uh, time, and that arrow shooting up? And you'll see there's a metal scoop that goes up, and that'll kick it up to the, uh, to the upper play field. That's what I'm trying to hit, but you got to hit it with force and be precise. And it is not easy. This is where the, there we go, the aiming on Zacharias' tables doesn't seem right. Oh, and then it went dead. That was it. I only had a little time to try and uh, battle up there. These are not... Um, newbie friendly tables either uh, and I say that in that they don't show you very easily where you're supposed to be shooting um, oh, look at that got knocked down that thing twice much better second ball than first ball or uh, second game Bonus ball time. Yeah. Never even got a chance to flip. For all you to com complain <laughs> about pinball being unfair, that's the harsh reality. Okay. You know, I think we're going to end on 1982, actually, and then uh, the next uh, the next one will pick up in 1983, the next video. So we're going to end here on Soccer Kings, which I find amusing that they call it Soccer Kings, yet they're Italian, so it should have been Football Kings. So which audience were they uh, trying to appeal to? Americans, because these tables didn't really reach the shores. Oh. Thanks. I didn't know what I was supposed to do. Um, so I'm surprised it's not called Football Kings, but very generic names on all the uh, Zach tables. Shoot to the center. I gotta figure out how I got that. Ball even up there. Off to the center. The last ball came. Shoot to the center. So you tell me to shoot to the center, but 
I'm not sure what it, what is there. Is it a saucer in there? I can't tell. Oh, <laughs> and then my time ran out. Oh ah, well, that's okay. Um, yeah, so that's it. Those are uh, of the 27 tables. Those would be the first 13. So 1978 to 1982 for Zachariah Pinball. That's what's going to be uh, featured on the well-played arcade cabinet. Um, first half of the tables that uh, were announced, we'll do another video that'll be the... Uh, second half of all those tables, but I wanted to give you guys an idea of what those are, because maybe you're not familiar with Zachary Pinball in the least. Maybe you didn't realize that there was a Steam app. Um, maybe you're wondering what this other pinball cab that's coming to the market is. Um, it's a taste. All right, until next time. Bye-bye.